Hey y'all, it's finally a beautiful day here in Florida and uh, we're going to go check out and see what's going on in the Lepidarium. I'm just out here cleaning it out and I actually have the Caterpillar Dome. <laughs> this is a big plastic bowl and I actually set it over top of this, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, on the cool days. And it, so it made a little warm dome for them and they really enjoyed it, except now that I want to take it out. Look at these guys here. They're, we're getting new cuttings. Like you're just going to come along. We're going to reset this whole thing. But this one down here has decided he's going to start making his soap button to pupate. So I'm going to have to flip this bowl over and uh, put it back in the lepidarium <laughs> so he can do his thing in it. Isn't that something? All right. So I was just heading out to the garden to get a fresh giant milkweed cutting for these little babies. So let's go do that. My garden looks so fresh and green. We just had a wonderful drenching rain from a front, but it's not cold. We finally have blue sky sunshine and warm weather. This combination I have been waiting for for so long, y'all, and I can't tell you how delighted I am that it is finally here. So I'm looking at my giant milkweeds, and I think I'm actually going to go for this one back here because those caterpillars are pretty big, and I don't want to take a huge cutting. So I think I'll just take this one right here. I just snip the whole thing off, and we'll bring that in. I always wash the milkweed. I don't bleach wash it, but um, the giant leaves have these like this like white fuzz on it. See how it's coming off when I rub my thumb on it. So I make sure I get all of that off when I rinse it under the water and that white fuzz could tend to easily hold on to OE spores. So by getting all of that off of there, I feel like I would be getting rid of any potential OE or anything else on there that we don't want. All right, here we are back at the lepidarium. My cutting is all cleaned off. And now for these two adorable little guys, I'm just going to move them right on to the new leaf. All right, we'll take you first, mister. There you go. And you're next. Look at how well these floral tubes fit in these slots. I mean, look at that. And what I love about it is it gets them more up on eye level. So like if they go underneath the leaf, it's real easy for me to peek under and see their cute little selves. So I really, and I love the size of it. It's huge. So I'm loving this find. I'm loving this find. Y'all know that I have carried these floral tubes in my purse. And when I've gone to thrift stores and things like that, I will pull it out, see if it will fit in them. <laughs> um, but this is by far my favorite giant wire basket that I found. But now I have to hide it away because this little booger here <laughs> decided he's going to pupate on it. So, you know, you know what? Let me see if I can, because it's going to be warmer now. We're not going to have cooler weather. I am constantly changing this up because of our wacky weather here in Florida. Look at, look at what this guy did. Do you see what he did already? There's, there's frass. He's just climbing right over it. All right, well, 
I'll sweep that away. But so I'm constantly looking at the 10 day forecast. So I know like, do I need to cover them up or leave them uncovered? Or is it a good day to release a butterfly or not? And we're going to have a, a stretch of a little bit warmer weather. So they don't need to be under the caterpillar dome. But the caterpillar dome does need to stay because of that one. And when they've started making their silk button or when they've gotten to a spot and stay there, you don't want to move them. Because if they've made their silk button, they think they're done and they might not still be able to pupate because the whole, like there's things going on inside its little body right now preparing and you just don't want to move them. You just don't. So since he's there and he hasn't moved, like if I would have taken this dome off and he would have like started crawling around and moving, then I could have easily moved him. But he has stayed in this spot, so I am not touching him. The little dome is going back in. He'll be able to pupate up there <laughs> and he'll be just fine. Just giving you another little shot of these two. And then over here, my menagerie of chrysalides. Look who you can see. You can start seeing wings. So maybe tomorrow or the next day I'll have another monarch. And that'd be good timing. Good timing. So just to clarify the dome thing, Prior to when it was colder, I put this dome over the cutting. So the caterpillars and the cuttings would be up inside of it. Um, it actually worked really well. They seemed quite comfortable in there. Next on the list right over here are my golf fritillaries. And their cuttings are actually looking fabulous. I don't need to get more, but I do need to top off the water in each of these containers. So look how big this guy is. He is going to be pupating soon. I am so glad I have all of them in here because y'all, I haven't seen a golf fritillary in weeks in my garden. And at least I know I will have some coming. And now that we're trending warmer again, I hope, please, stay that way. It's going to be fabulous for them to complete their life cycle as caterpillars and fly free as butterflies. Look at this guy. He came up on this empty stem. I've noticed with the giant milkweed, they love chewing on the stems. I can't get enough of them. They're so cute. They're such little characters. And I absolutely love raising these monarch caterpillars in my lepidarium. And the golf fritillaries too. And I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to have more. Like I feel like we're getting closer and closer to spring. And I... I'm here for it. All right, I pulled my three little bottles of Maypop incense out, and I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do a paper towel, freshen up. You can see that's from where a golf fritillary butterfly closed. So I'll just roll these up. I have a compost bin actually that I put these paper towels with the frass in and it's actually right below me right here and then that will become future soil for my garden I do the paper towels in sections so I don't have to take everything out at once like this is a section and then this is a section and then down there is a section 
which makes it a lot easier to maintain the lepidarium so I don't have to unload the whole thing. Oh my gosh, look, look how cute they are. They're all snacking on that one little leaf. <laughs> That's how they were on the other thing too. They just must like hanging out with each other. And now for these, I will just kind of snip off any dead dying ends and and they'll go down into the compost bin, pull out, you know, crumbly old leaves just to freshen it up and I'll move them back in. Y'all, it's annoying me on this water bottle how long it takes to fill. So I'm just going to cut off where the nozzle narrows. There we go. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some better flow. Oh, yeah, that's better. I love using these because you can get them into the plant. It's easier to get into the plant and without disturbing the caterpillars. But, oh my goodness, the flow on this one was awful. So, that's better. And this is what you heard in the background. Yeah, he loves chewing plastic things. And... Since he had already snuck and got this and chewed it, I just let him have it <laughs> so he can chew away his little basket. <laughs> Look how cute. Hey, y'all. So this video is going up tonight, but I wanted to pop back in and show you Mr. Adorable that pupated in the bowl. And I want to take a minute and ask you to let me know in the comments if there's a topic that you want me to make a video about related to butterfly gardening. And just let me know, because, just let me know. You know, you never know. I'm going to make a video just for you. So say something in the comments. There are two golf fritillary butterflies in here. And... There's this little golf fritillary caterpillar. He's right on the inside screen, so it's going to make it more challenging to get in there and show you my little caterpillar dude, but we're, we're going to do it. Okay, you can kind of see it through the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and lift it, and we'll just have a little peek. There we go. Chrysalis in a bowl. And that leads me down to two caterpillars. This one right here is on the Maypot Passion Vine. And you can see it's already made its silk button where it's going to attach and drop down and J-hang. It will attach to that silk button with its cream master and then it will be pupating soon. And then my last one is right here. I just put a fresh piece of giant milkweed in here because they went through all the other that we put in earlier in this video. And this is my last monarch caterpillar. Oh my, I'm gonna need some eggs and babies. I am ready for that season to begin. Fill my comments up with caterpillar emojis. If you are ready for caterpillars to be back in your garden again, just fill it up with a bunch of emojis. I want to hear from all of you. At least three caterpillar emojis. But you can do more. Because more is wonderful. And let me know what you want videos about. And I'll see you in the next one.